Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'd like to show you one another very exciting chess game. This time from 1893 from New York. Uh, from the first the chess club tournament. Uh, so in this chess game we have the legend Harry Nelson Pillsbury with the white pieces and his opponent was David Baird who was four times the chess champion of the Manhattan Chess Club. So let's see what happened in this chess game. Harry Nelson Pillsbury starts the game with d4, we have d5, e3 and bishop to d3, it looks like the call system, knight to d2, bishop to d6, c3 and Pillsbury pushed the f-pawn and this setup looks like the stonewall pawn structure which Pillsbury used this many times in his chess career. So b6, knight from g to f3, bishop to b7 and knight to e5, knight is getting in and exchanging and then bishop to b5 the knight is pinned attacking the knight so eliminating the knight the knight was causing enough problems for black so capturing and you can see that black has isolated pawn on e4 so a6 bishop goes back b5 bishop back checking the king and then queen to h3 Pillsbury played queen to e2 not allowing queen to g2 so bishop to d5 not exchanging the bishops. If exchanging, black can fix the pawn structure. So Pillsbury is still targeting the weakness. f5 not ampassant because black can develop the knight. And then Pillsbury played b3. So this is his plan. Pushing the c pawn and advancing. So h5 and then c4 as planned. And bishop to b2, h4 and Pillsbury castled from the queen side. h takes on g3 and simply d5, ignoring what's happening in the king side. So bishop to b7, actually capturing the pawn is possible in this position. But then c takes on d5 and you can see that white has pretty strong center. So after d5, bishop to b7 and Pillsbury played d takes on e6. So after defending the knight, bishop to a3, knight captures the pawn and c takes on b5 and we have g takes on h2 black continues to grab pawns in the king side while Pillsbury was a little bit more busy in the queen side in this position if a takes on b5 then queen takes on b5 and actually defending this is not very easy in this position so attacking the bishop so targeting the king as well checking the king so after moving the king queen to d7 and actually black is losing by force so any king move is going to lose the knight with check as you can see so after c takes on b5 not capturing it would be fatal and Pillsbury played queen to c4 attacking the knight black played queen takes on e3 after moving the king queen goes back and defending the knight Moving the knight also has fatal uh, consequences in this position because of queen takes on c7 and how to defend queen to d7 or queen to e7 also attacking the bishop. Well, this is all over. Actually, there is no defense in this position. So you can see that black's position is so fragile and it doesn't look very safe for black. So after this move we have king to b2 and queen comes back for the rescue but in this position actually uh, actually mr david baird overlooked a very important tactic a very strong move in this position but uh, but can you see the next move of harry nelson pillsbury he played a very cool move a winning move it was as cool as a cucumber. So if I give you a few seconds, can you guess the next move of Harry Nelson Pillsbury? Why going back with the queen and defending the knight is actually a losing move. So it is white to move and win. White has a winning move, a very cool move. Okay, so Pillsbury played rook to the six. So forking the queen and the knight and what else capturing the rook but this blocks the queen Pillsbury captures the knight after moving the king 
Well, king to f8 has a downside. And that his bishop takes on d6, black has to give up the queen and this is game over. So after this very beautiful move, again, let's check this beautiful move again. Rook to d6, black is forced to capture the rook. And then Pillsbury captured the knight after moving the king rook to d1. A very strong move and leaving the pawn for promotion. Very cool, isn't it? Promoting the queen. <laughs> Look at this position. Black has two queens. But positionally, black is losing. Not materially, maybe. But positionally. In this position, actually, rook to h6 is also losing. It looks like it is defending and attacking the queen. But simply check, check. And this is losing. And getting the rook. And, well... White has extra material, so this is losing for black. So in this position, after rook to d1, promoting the queen, but Pillsbury goes forward. Rook takes on d6, queen takes rook. King to c7 is also losing by force, capturing the queen and how to defend the checkmate. If capturing the rook, then we have check. If king to e8, then queen to e7. So king to c8 and then b6 and there is no defense in this position, black is getting checkmated. So rook takes, queen takes and queen takes with check. King to c8, Pillsbury played the move and Mr. Bayard resigned. The move was b6 and how to defend, queen to c7, check, mate. There is no defense. Incredible. Actually black has... Two rooks against the bishop, so materially speaking, black is much better, but black can stop the checkmate, the checkmate in one move. Black can only prolong the game with moves like queen to a1, rook to h1, rook to b1, bishop takes and some random move, and then queen to c7, checkmate. What a beautiful entertaining chess game by Harry Nelson Pillsbury. One of the greatest chess players from the late 19th century, early 20th century. Unfortunately, he died at the age of only 33. So, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye-bye.